This board has taken me many attempts to get right. I kept missing little things. On my first iteration, I ran out of budget halfway through and I've made a few mistakes along the way which are documented on my channel. And this is where I've ended up so far. Sadly, I ran out of blue banana connectors. I might have to steal a couple from the other board you see below this just to make it look complete. Anyway, this is the latest iteration of the board. It's still not perfect. So as I mentioned, in one of the versions, I messed up the copper port and then didn't run a DRC check. I made a video on that, um, so you can check that out if you want. And then on my last attempt, you can see the pad sizes for some of the components were not quite correct. I've corrected that as well. I've added another switch to the design. So yeah, a few rough drafts later, we've arrived at this one. Still not 100%, but getting closer. The whole point of this design is to create reusable design blocks for my other projects. So I can drop these components into new designs without rebuilding everything from scratch every time. So what is this PCB design? This is a power supply board that can run from a LiPo battery. It can recharge the LiPo battery as well. So you can connect a single cell LiPo battery to the connections you see down here and it generates multiple outputs. So you've got minus 24 volts, plus 24 volts, five volts and 3.3. In another iteration, I want to be able to switch the 24 volts for 12 volts with a switch as well. I should also have added some silk screen for clarity, but well, next time, cause I need another iteration anyway. Anyway, the good news is the board finally works, mostly and I'll go through the remaining issues later in the video when we go through the schematic. So before we jump into the schematic and take a look at how all the voltage rails are generated, I want to say a quick thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. So if you've been following my channel, you'll know I've used them for a lot of projects, mostly because they're quick, reliable, the quality is consistently good. You can get standard PCBs, turnkey assembly, 3D printing, stencils, and even CNC machining if you need enclosures or custom parts. Their online interface makes quoting and uploading Gerbers really easy. Just drag and drop and you're done. If you're working on your own project and need professional looking boards, check out PCBWay using the link in the description below. So we've got a five volt power supply on this board and I'll just go around and measure everything so you can see what's happening. As the main five volt input that feeds into the LiPo charging circuit down here, it also powers the other converters on the board. The main one is the 3.3 regular right at the bottom. That's your standard rail for microcontrollers and most low power logic stuff. And then you have plus and minus 24 volts. So you've got positive 24 volts and negative. These are handy if you're working with op amps or anything that needs a higher voltage swing. Obviously the higher the voltage, the more careful you need to be but 24 volts is still pretty safe to handle. Again, be careful. And then of course, there's another five volt output. Eventually, I want to move that section further down the board so that 3.3 and five volts are close to each other, just to tidy up the layout and make using the board a little bit easier. And above the 24 volts, we've got a five volt rail. And eventually I want to add a switch or a microcontroller controlled input to this uh, circuit so that I can control basically between 24 volts and 12 volts just so that it gives us more flexibility when using the power supply. You can see I've also got a toggle switch and a push switch on this board. And that's where I've kind of messed up the design a little bit in that for my push switch, I've connected one of the terminals to ground when it should have been left open. And this means if you use that switch and you have a battery connected, you can short out the whole thing, which is obviously not great. And so there's a few things I need to correct on this board, a few things I want to add on this board. In terms of generating my design blocks, I think it's there. I want to do some tests on this, such as load transitions, uh, power on time, efficiency, and things like that. But I will document that on my channel uh, at a later stage. Today, we're just gonna go through the schematic and PCB design in a bit more detail. Let's take a closer look at the schematic and how this board actually works. So we're first going to start with the USB-C connector. This is one way to power the whole board. Right now, it feeds a toggle switch that lets you choose whether the board is powered from USB-C or from a LiPo battery. With this uh, switch over here, when you switch to USB-C, 5 volts goes to all the converters, which is basically this path over here. And 5C goes to all of the 3.3 uh, and the plus and minus 24 volt converters. The 5 volts will go directly to the uh, banana plug. And when you switch to the LiPo, uh, you also have to turn this on, which is where I've made my mistake. I've connected this junction to ground when I should have left it open circuit. Now, right now, if you connect two to three, 
Obviously you're shorting out your battery and you don't want to do that. So it, for my next iteration, I'm going to remove these connections and I'm going to make some other modifications as well, which I'll talk about in a bit. Right now, what happens is that your battery connects to a TPS 63060, which is a buck boost converter. We're using it as a boost converter, which generates five volts from the battery voltage, which could be anything from like 3.4 to 4.2 volts, I think. And then you can choose to basically power these regulators from that five volts. And this is basically a standalone mode. If you want to use the power supply as a remote thing, rather than connected to a computer or a wall socket or anything like that. Now this function and this function, I want to make that a little bit more automatic. So I'm gonna design a circuit that lets me do that. So if five volts is connected from the USB-C power supply, then basically I want the LiPo circuit to be automatically disconnected. I'll need to devise the circuit for it. And I would obviously need to make sure that we don't accidentally short anything. The five volts uh, from the USB-C goes to the TP4056. Now this is not switched. Um, basically, if you have your V bus connected, you will start charging the battery. I don't think I want to have a switch there. I just let it run basically. Now that might cause some issues if you're also trying to draw a lot of current from this side, because obviously all of that's going to be shared from a single um, USB-C connector coming in. Now, if you're not using a block power supply and using your computer, you might be limited to 500 milliamps, which could be an issue. For the voltage rails, we basically have a LT8334 uh, converter, which right now is generating plus 24 volts. And this circuit here is generating the minus 24 volts. Now it's very easy to change this to a plus uh, 12 volt circuit. And you just basically have to toggle one of these resistors. So what I'm thinking to do is have a resistor in parallel with what's on here at the moment and have a transistor, maybe a BJT or a MOSFET to toggle that resistor using a switch or a microcontroller. So that will let you switch between 24 volts and 12 volts. The same thing is possible on this side as well. I think the only thing you have to make sure about is stability. We can do some tests to see how well that works. I have a LMR51430 buck converter over here, which is a very simple buck converter, uh, as you can see from the design, which is meant to be very efficient, but the lowest voltage it can run off is uh, 4.5 volt. You would need this circuit in place if you wanted to run off just the battery alone. That might be an issue we can solve. If all of these can run from 3.3 volts, then you basically don't need the circuit, but you are drawing a lot of current. I was thinking of adding an LDO output as well, but in the end, I decided um, that you should probably have like noise filtering and things like that on the thing that's being powered on. Now, I don't expect any of this to be very quiet, but we will do some measurements later on. So just going on to the PCB design, uh, start with the 3D viewer. You can see it looks very similar. I'm missing some 3D models on this. Uh, which I need to find or design myself. I want to add some silk screens for the connectors. Obviously, this is the five volts, so that shouldn't be really a black connector, but that's fine. And uh, we have 3.3 down here. We have plus and minus 24 volts over here, which I think I want to separate these out a little bit from the five and the 3.3. Uh, Ideally, I get rid of all of this as well, so you don't need the switches. And I put in some MOSFETs and uh, some analog circuit to control where the voltage, where the power is coming from, from the circuit. What I want to do is that if the USB-C connector is plugged in, uh, I want to disconnect the LiPo battery connection. So in terms of the changes I'm thinking to make, um, I've started basically changing the schematic around. And I've removed the push switch because I don't think I need it anymore. And I've moved the toggle switch to the battery terminal and I've called the battery terminal um, battery switch. And that's the terminal that will go to the TP4056, which is the charging circuit, which gets VBUS and it's always connected. And then I've added a P-channel MOSFET over here, which is turned on and off by the VBUS connection. So if VBUS is not connected, the gate of this p-channel MOSFET is pulled to ground and this connection is active. Obviously this connection is only active if this switch is active at the same time. If this switch is pressed and VBUS is not connected, then this is also off. So when this switch is pressed and VBUS is not active, we get power going through over here and this connection is basically connected up. And I've added a diode at the end 
and this is just for a little bit of safety or this side of the diode goes to the V bus line over here and that's just in case there's power going this way and we don't want to be pushing current back into here when this part is switched off so this diode is basically preventing um the 5 volts going back into this circuit over here now i've done a simulation for this and it seems to work this is our 5 volt input this is the lipo battery this is meant to represent the 5 volt boost circuit which is um the circuit down here now obviously I've only put a resistor in here so we're only going to get 4.2 volts with, from this battery. We're not going to get 5 volts. I've got this diode over here which is this diode. And for the simulation I need a diode over here. But I've not added any diode for my USB input because that's not going to be necessary on my uh, 5 volt input. Now if we simulate the circuit uh, which I think works quite well. Um, I've got my V bus basically going on and off with a time period of uh, four seconds so you can see it's on for two seconds and off for two seconds comes back on initially is off so we can look at the output of our circuit i've got 4.2 volts coming from the battery over here so you can see that's at 4.2 all the time we can have that switch over here if you want to but obviously we don't need it for the simulation we can look at the output voltage which is going to all the converters which is represented with r4 over here so you can see r4 when V bus is off, gets the 4.2 volts. And when V bus is on, it gets 5 volts. When the 5 volts is connected, obviously, this uh, should be off. So we shouldn't have any voltage over here. So you can see this uh, P channel MOSFET disconnects the, um, the battery from the 5 volt boost converter. So this voltage over here, which is the 5 volt boost converter, goes to 0 volts, which is exactly what I want. So when the user plugs in a USB C connector, the LiPo battery will basically disconnect. Now I've made the changes to the schematic. Uh, I've not made the changes to the PCB design yet, but I will do so shortly. Now the circuit overall should take less space than what I had at the moment, so should be all good. Another thing I want to do is add in the capability of doing um, 12 and 24 volts. I will need to have an N-channel MOSFET over here and a resistor which the resistor will change the value of one of these resistors and we will basically get a different value for the feedback voltage. And that will allow us to change between 12 volts and 24 volts, which I think will be handy. And default, I want it to be 12 volts rather than 24. So for switching between uh, minus 12 and minus 24 volts and plus 12 and plus 24 volts, I've added a MOSFET, an N-channel MOSFET over here a secondary resistor. It meant I have to change some of the values. So the values I'm aiming for are 71.5K when both of these resistors are switched on and 154K uh, when this resistor is switched off. So 154K over here, which will give me 12 volts output. And when this is switched on, I will get these two in parallel and I will get um, 24 volts output. Similar sort of thing here, but the resistor values are divided by two just because the feedback voltage when having negative voltage is 0 0.8 volts. And over here, I think is 1.6 volts uh, feedback when it's positive voltage. Now there's two things um, I'm a little bit concerned about, but we'll see how this works. Uh, the first is the leakage current on this. Obviously the uh, resistor value is quite high here and all of the feedback resistor values are quite high as well. This MOSFET might have a leakage current, which is significant and will basically add to the error on the um, output voltage. I'm not using this for anything that needs, you know, accurate 24 volts, so that should be okay. But the other thing which I'm a little bit more concerned about is if it causes some instability in the feedback network. I'll see how that works. Um, if I need to remove it, I can remove this part of the circuit and see if the circuit works back up again. So as a test, I think it's a good circuit. And the gate voltage is basically connected to a toggle switch, which lets me connect the gate to 5 volts or ground. So basically turn it on or off. And both of the MOSFETs are controlled by the same switch. So that's all the changes I need to make to this circuit. And hopefully um, this will fix everything I need to. Obviously, I need to make sure on the PCB design that I add in the salt screens that I wanted and just generally move things around. So I want uh, 3.3 volts at the bottom 
We want 5 volts over here, and then I think I'll put ground in the middle, and then the plus and minus uh, 24 volts on this side. And that's it for this board. Lots of trial and error, a few mistakes along the way, but it's finally working, obviously mostly. I'll keep improving it for future revisions because I think it's still going to be a useful thing for me going forward uh, to use on my projects. And I'll make sure to show you all the updates as they happen. I wanted to share my mistakes as well because, you know, they do happen when you're doing electrical design and PCB design. It's very easy to miss uh, little things, especially when you don't have someone else to check them over for you. I think going forward, you know, I want to be a little bit more careful, take a bit more time when I'm doing my designs. If you've enjoyed seeing how this board came together, the mistakes along the way, the experiments and everything else, and you want to support the channel so I can keep making projects like this and everything else I've done on my channel, consider becoming a member. It really helps me keep creating content. If you choose the highest membership, I can send you one of my boards from any of the projects I've done if you cover the shipping and postage charge. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.